God for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hey, 
Amen. <clears throat> you know, we've got uh, stormy weather today, sleet and snow and cold and all of that on the outside, but thank God for the warmth of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, I'm so thankful. I, I wouldn't even want to wake up in the morning if I had to wake up without him. Amen. But since I have got him, I think I'll shoot for 120. Amen. How about that? Amen. Amen. Well, are we ready to get in the Word today? Swords in the air. This is the unfailing Word of God. What it says, I'm doing. I'm covered and protected by the blood of Jesus. Today, I'm blessed in wisdom and understanding the word. Therefore, today and every day, I live in victory. Amen. You believe that? Hallelujah. Well, you know, um, I'm so thankful for the word of God. So thankful. So thankful, so thankful. My pen just fell off. Did y'all hear that? What does it say on the screen? He makes my way. He makes my way. And today, <clears throat> we're going to look at the word way. Uh, there is a, well, we'll just go there. I looked in Webster, and I uh, looked in the Hebrew and Greek, and the Webster said, uh, the definition of way is a course leading from one place to another. And so, if I said to you, here is the way to get to my house, then you would pay real close attention of not where point A is, because that's where you are, or even where point B is, that's where I am, my house is, but you would pay real close attention to how to get from a to B. So if we are going to look at this word, the way, there is a way that seems right, but it's not. And so we want to make sure we're in the right way, that we're on the right way. Amen. I don't want to live my whole life out to find out I was in the wrong way, that I'd live my whole life thinking that I was right when I was wrong. Amen? And so the Bible teaches us the way. The way, the truth, and the life. Amen. And so we're going to look this morning. Um, and the Webster, it, another, uh, another definition, it said a road. So that means that's something I'm traveling on. It said a passage. You know, if I was going to try to get through mountains, I need to know where the passage is. Even though I'm, the mountains are still there, but I need to know how to get through them. Amen. It said direction. So I need direction. I remember when uh, the Lord had spoke to me in uh, Portland, Oregon. Woke me up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Told me he was sending me back to the south. And boy, you know, that wasn't good news for me. I thought I was going to live my life out there. And, uh, and I remember uh, him, him telling me that. And I said, you know, and I just love the Lord. So if he had told me to fly the moon, I would have tried to figure out how, you know. But I remember him providing every step of the way for 20, over 2,500 miles across the United States. That I hear I was a, a, a woman with my stuff in a truck, me driving that truck, dragging my car behind me, and a, another lady with me that she had half of that truck, her stuff in there. And, and I remember in the natural, it looked impossible. We went through mountains, the snow was as big as a quarter. We, we, you know, we went through places that it took a God to get us out and through. But I'm standing here today to tell you that he will make a way where there is no way. He will. Not me. He will. Isn't that good? 
Isn't that good to know that what, what his promises are, they're yes and amen. They're not kind of. Well, I'm going to kind of make you away. <laughs> Wouldn't that be awful if that's how the Lord spoke to us? Well, are you going to make a way for me, Lord? Well, kind of, kind of. You know, well, are you going to give me a, a, a boat? Yeah, but there'll not be any oars. So just, you know, try to get there the best way you can. Well, are you going to give me a car to ride in? Well, yeah, but there's not any gas. So I don't know what you're going to do. I'll kind of make a way. I'll sort of make a way. But see, that's not what he said. In fact, he promised me in 1997. He said, Barbara, if you'll keep me first. You know, there's a scripture that says, talk about, you know, putting him first. Well, it's one thing for me to put something there, but it's another thing for me to keep it there. See? But he said, Barbara, if you'll keep me first, I'll always take care of you. And I'm here to tell you, since 1997, that promise is valid. There's not been one time that he hasn't taken care of me. There's not been one time that he hadn't made a way for me where there was absolutely no way possible, but he made the way. I could stand up here and, get, and bend your ear all day long and tell you testimony after testimony after testimony. And I could tell you how he made a way for me, but instead, I'm going to tell you what he has to say about it. Amen, amen. amen. So we're, our first scripture is going to be in Psalms. And just hang with me because we're going to go there. Psalms chapter 1. You know, and I love the first chapter of Psalms. I do. I love that. It's only a six verses long, but boy, it's a powerful six verses. And we're going <coughs> we're gonna to get all six verses. Are you ready? Yes. <clears throat> Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. See, life itself will bring you disappointment, sadness. You know, you can be going along and everything's great. And all of a sudden you hear uh, from Aunt Taxi and, you know, she's uh, letting you know all the bad news. And all of a sudden that joyous, woohoo, happy day turned into something else. But see, he's telling us something today. He's teaching us something. Is bad things in life going to happen? Absolutely, until Jesus comes and sets this thing up. Uh, you know, that the, removes all the evil out of the earth. Yeah, yeah. But look here. He said, but it's delight. So I've got to do this. I've got to take delight in what the Word says. See, the, the Word will always lead me in the right way. There's many ways out there. That's why he said, don't look to the left, don't look to the right. That's why he said, keep your eyes focused on him because there are many, many paths and many ways that look and appear right. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. Well, what does that mean? That means when I've got it standing in front of me and I've got opposition or I've got fatigueness, tiredness, whatever's going on that I've got in front of me, that my mind, I've got to pull down the stronghold that would exalt itself against what the Word says and I've got to keep my mind thinking on, but what does God say about me? What does God say? What's he say about me? I belong to him. I don't belong to the devil. Say that out loud. I don't belong to the devil. He doesn't have anything in me. I belong to God. So I'm going to go by what God says about me. Amen. Amen. You know what? Yes, thank you. You know, that's like a, your neighbors over here. And your kids are out in the yard playing and your neighbors are going to tell your kids how they can or cannot do something. You know what? You'd be at that fence in about two shakes of a sheep's tail. And you'd be letting that neighbor know, you wait a minute, those kids belong to me. And, and the say-so about them kids is mine, not yours. See, you're across the fence. And as long as you are across the fence, you hadn't got nothing to do about me and mine. See, that's how you got to look at the devil. When the devil, the devil can only get so far to you. But I'm telling you today, the devil's across the fence. And you need to let the devil know, no, not about me and mine. 
No, you ain't got any say so because see, me and mine, even my property, my vehicles, my children, my grand, everything that belongs to me, it already belongs to him. Yes. And so God's got to say so about it. Amen. Amen. Woo, hallelujah. You say, yeah, but look how crazy they're acting. Look how they're far they are from the Lord. Well, well, you know, go ahead and look at that stuff. Get yourself all caught up in it. Or either get your eyes on what the Word said and stay focused on what God has to say. You know what? I believe this today. I believe God is a God that He is not a liar. He cannot lie. He cannot withdraw His promises. He cannot change His mind about you because He is love. Woo, I'm telling you, I'm going to try to get this out today. This is good stuff today. It said that uh, in verse 3, and he shall be, he shall be. See, I may not be a tree right now. I remember years ago. Look, this is funny. Years ago, boy, I was so depressed, and I was battling and tr- warring, and, you know, I was just a baby in the Lord. And I remember uh, just thinking, oh, God, you know, I'm just not enough. I'm just, I'm not praying enough. I'm not reading enough. I'm not, I'm not. And, and I went to bed, boy, just so depressed, and, I, and the, I heard these words. It wasn't me speaking in tongues. It it was words. It was words that I did, did not recognize, you know, the language. And so I got up out of bed. It was about midnight. I got up out of bed and wrote those words down. And I thought, this has got to mean something. I don't know what this is. And so I went to the Bible, and I looked up every word in the Hebrew. You know what? God has got a sense of humor. I've got to tell you this today. When I looked up every word and every definition, do you know what it said? You know what he said to me? See, he got my attention. He said, why are you trying to be a tree when you're only a bush? Can you believe God said that to me? I, yeah, he said it to me, but it was in another language. When I looked it up. See, what I got to tell you today is the devil will come by looking at your tree and see the Lord dropped this in me on Tuesday. The devil will come by looking at your tree and your tree, here it is. Here stands your tree and it looks bare. It looks bare. You ain't producing. You ain't got nothing on there. But can I tell you that in the fall, in the winter, that the tree becomes bare, but it don't change what it is. It's still a tree. And when you've got a, you've got, you're walking through the fall. You're walking through the winter. Don't you let the devil tell you you're not a tree anymore. Because I'm here to tell you that the roots are still run as deep as they did. And the branches are still as big. The only difference is when all them leaves and stuff is gone, you can see really what that tree, how the shape and the form of it is, and how many branches it really does have for when the spring comes. And listen, i got news for every one of you today. Spring is coming. It's coming, and when it's coming, you're not going to remember how barren those branches were. You're not going to remember, and you're not going to be about how that tree looked. Can I tell you, in the spring and summer, I'm not sitting out in my backyard looking at that tree, visualizing how it looked without any leaves on it. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm enjoying what's out there right now. And listen, uh, according to the news, this COVID thing, there's new strings and, and they're mightier and they're, they're this and they're that and they're stronger than the other one. And boy, we're looking at something wiping out. Or you can look at what the Word said, that I'm just going to trust God until I leave here. I'm going to trust the Lord to protect me and keep me in the safety of His arms. How about that? How about that? Is this good today? Yes. Verse 3 says, And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit. Where, when? In his season. That brings forth his... Now listen, wouldn't that be crazy to be out here 30 degrees and the trees all filled up with, blo- with leaves and all their fruit for it to last, what, overnight? See, God knows what he's doing. Say that out loud. God knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing about me. See? That just see, you got to get that in front of you. And look, it said, His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever, whatsoever he doeth, whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Can you believe that today? Well, Sister Barbara, you know I spent a lot on Christmas, and I'm really get behind, and I don't know what I'm going to do now. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, stop doing that. 
Start trusting the Lord. Start reaching out to God, thanking him that, that he's your provider, that he's more than enough. God is not barely enough. He's more than enough. And I can tell you this, <clears throat> he's done it time after time after time. When I'm looking at my funds or looking at my income, that will be right when the Lord says to me, I need you to plant this over here and over there. And he'll give me an amount. And you know what? I don't bat an eye at it. You know why I don't? I can tell you why I don't. Because he's proven himself to me over and over and over again. He's proven himself to be loyal to me, to your, he's loyal to his children. If he tells you he will, then he will. Whoo, hallelujah. But look at verse four. The ungodly, the ungodly are not so. And you know, I like what Jackie was saying this morning about, you know, godliness. I like that. I like, you know, serving the Lord and, and, and searching ourselves and looking at ourselves. You know, that's what we do. Amen? Isn't that what we do? If we find something that we know is in our heart, what are we going to do? Leave it in there and let it take root? Or are we going to get that junk out of there and say, oh, no, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to be, I'm not being of that. No, no, I'm not going to. See, is that what we do? Does that mean we don't have any battles? No, that's not what that means. Does that mean we don't have any struggles? No, that's not what that means. What it means is, is that we make up our mind that we're not going to let a root of bitterness or a root of anger, unforgiveness abide in our hearts. Now, a whole lot of junk goes on out here. Oh, I'd like to throat punch them, you know. I'd like to, you know, come on now. You know where our minds go. But you know what we do? We search ourselves. We say, Lord, I can't let that junk get in my heart. Because let me tell you something today. Let me tell you something. It is very important for you and I to keep our channels clear. It's very important. This Holy Spirit channels in and out. In and out. And we've got to make sure that our channels are clear because see, I'm going to say it like this. What if it's one of your loved ones that needs you to hear from God right now? See? Now, is it, is it more important to you uh, to, to have anger, malice, strife, un, uh, unforgiveness, all that junk, and maybe not hear God? Or is it more important for you to hear? Huh? See, we've got, we, we got to do this thing right. We've got to look at it. You say, yeah, but Sister Barbara, I had a loved one that left out of here and I didn't hear nothing. Well, you weren't supposed to. Don't you let the devil beat you up about that. Amen? Amen. But say this out loud. I'm going to keep my channels clear so I can hear what the Spirit says to the church. Now, are you? Okay, here we go. Verse 4. The ungodly are not so. Now, we just read one through three about the godly. But the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Have you ever known people personally? No, I have. I've known people that it is, they're like the wind. There's no stability. There's no nothing. They're just flip-flopping around. You don't know if they're going to be up or down today. When you run into them, you don't know, you know, you don't know if you're going to get a cussing or praising. You don't know what's going on. They're like the wind. See, the word said that. Verse 5. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. Now, here we are. Does God know what your way is? Does he know? You know what? I believe this. I believe he knows the very day that I'm going to draw my last breath in this earthen realm. I do. I believe that. I believe he knows everything there is about me. He knows every molecule of my body. He knows everything about me from head to toe. You know why? Because he's God. And that's why I trust him. I trust him. Don't you? Amen. And you know, let me tell you what we do as human beings. <laughs> and, we're, and that's so crazy that we do it. But we've all been there and bought that t-shirt. You'll have a pain or, or something going on somewhere. And immediately you'll start worrying. Well, I wonder if this might be that C word. I wonder if I've got, oh, it might be my, might be my kidneys acting up. When you picked up something two days ago and, and, and put yourself in duress. Come on. 
But the devil will use that to get you off track of trusting God, your healer. Do you see? So you know why? When the thoughts come, thank you. <laughs> when the thoughts come, that is, you're going to die. Your kidneys are going to shut down. Your heart's going to stop beating. Then you need to say out loud, well, if it does, I'm going to go be with Jesus. And if it don't, I'm going to keep right on trusting him. Get that settled. And then, see, you pull down this stronghold. Amen. Okay, verse 6. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly, what, what does it say? Shall perish. So do I need to worry myself about the ungodly? Do I need to get fretful and all caught up? And you know what? I need to say this word to you because I heard it this week. <clears throat> one line I heard, I was listening to a minister on TV, and one sentence that he, that he said that it just sunk in my heart. He said, when you are in controversy, when you are in a battle with someone, and you're thinking, you think this, well, I need Jesus to take my, I know Jesus to take my side. Jesus will be on my side because I'm doing the right thing. I'm doing the right thing. I'm doing all I know to do, and Jesus is going to be on my side. But can I say this? Jesus is not going to be on your side or theirs. Jesus, if he come, if you invite him to come, he come to take over that situation. He don't take sides. He takes over. Now, is our little business, do we want to let Jesus take it over or do we want to get him to take our side? Come on. See, we got to look at this. Say this out loud. I need him to take over. And so, therefore... I'm going to let him. Yes, okay. See, isn't that good? Isn't that good stuff? You say, yeah, but what are you talking about, Sister Barbara? Everything in your life. Everything. What's your needs today? What kind of needs do you have? What kind of desires do you have? Are you just going to float along in life and let life carry you wherever it wants to? Are you making decisions? This is the beginning of the year. Are you on purpose planning? How many times that somebody out there that, that you can tell their stress because people are shorthanded? They're shorthanded. And I'm going to say this to the live stream. Those of you who know people that are in rest homes, that are in those kind of facilities, check on them, go visit them, Go, go see about them because I need you to understand that in the same way your restaurants are shorthanded, your, uh, your trucks are shorthanded, everything is shorthanded, so are workers in these rest homes. And I need you to know that you know you need to be checking on people. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, now let's turn to Psalms 18. Boy, I'm taking you on a tour this morning in Psalms, so y'all just hang with me. Psalms 18, verse 29. For by thee I have run through a troop, and by my God have I leaped over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. Do you know what perfect means? There's no flaws. There's no breaks. There's no perfect. God's way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. Now, see, you need to understand that when you're a baby, yes, I do need to tell them that, Lord. When you're a baby Christian... Someone else is, you know, I say it like this, burping you and spoon feeding you and changing your diaper because you, you're not, you can't handle it anymore. So that's why when you first get saved, you first come to the Lord, Woo, I'm telling you, everything's wonderful. Woohoo, everything's great. You just love everybody. You're just, you know, woo, you just feel ooey gooey. And then something changes. You start growing. And you're expected to feed yourself. And you're expected to do things yourself. And that's how it is in the kingdom. 
But see, when, you're, when you've got somebody else taking care of you, you know, you're just kind of floating along. But God expects us to grow up and take responsibility. And so when it says that uh, the word of the Lord is tried, how much word have you got in you? I'm going to say this. If you don't never have any challenges or no opposition or nothing ever goes on, you better check your word level. Because the Bible says, I didn't write this. The Bible teaches us that it's not, not looks, listen, whatever word you've got, you're going to be tried then. I can promise you for whatever I preach on Sunday, I'm tried by it. By Monday, I'm tried with it. Is it in me? Am I going to, you know, boy, you just, I, you know, and I can tell you, I don't preach on love a lot, and I can tell you why. Because <laughs> why? I know I'm fixing to be tried. If I, am I going to walk in it or not? You know, get up and preach and teach on healing and see what happens, huh? Am I telling the truth, Sister Lisa? Get up and teach on prosperity and see what happens. Refrigerator goes out, the washing machine quit. Come on. Go testify to somebody and tell them how wonderful life is and see what happens. And so then people will start saying this, well, I better not say that. You know, when I do, all hell breaks loose. Well, you better be saying it. You better be getting your words up there. You better be letting the devil know. I can tell you right now, you can come against me one way and I'll send you out 50,000 ways because I stand not in my own strength. I stand in the strength of God. See, we got a, we've, we've got a job to do, and that is to tell the world that Jesus is alive and well. How are they going to know that he answers prayer if you're not out there telling them, well, let me tell you what he did for me. How are they going to know? It's not left up to preachers. Let's go look in the book. There's all kinds of ministries in the book. <clears throat> Amen? Amen. <clears throat> As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He's a buckler to all those to all those that trust in him. He's not going to be that to you if you're not trusting in him. But you got to trust in him. And it says, <clears throat> verse 31, For who is God save the Lord? Or who is a rock save our God? It is God that girdeth me with strength and maketh my, my way. He makes my way perfect. I'm telling you, I don't want stumbling blocks in my path. I don't want to open a door, let the let the the flies of discontentment in my in my in my house. See, I don't want to do that. But listen, God's not going to jump down here and twist my arm and say, "All right, now, Barbara, line up. You got to get this right." No, he's not going to do that. He puts his word out here and he puts his way in front of me and he lets me know that his way is perfect and that if I'll trust him and that if I'll follow him, that he'll make my way perfect. Boy, this is good. Isn't this a good word? This is a good word. Okay, turn to Psalms 118. Psalms 118. <clears throat> Psalms 118, and I'm going to give you one verse. Verse 17. Psalms 118, verse 17. And I want everyone in the house to read it. When I say go, we're going to read. We're going to read it out, and I'm going to give you time to find it because I want you to get this scripture down in you. I want you to get it down in you. It didn't say, this scripture doesn't say, unless there is a, a COVID disease that hits the earth, unless there is spinal meningitis, unless there is cancer, unless, it doesn't say that. There's no unless here. Amen? All right, are we ready? We're going to read it like we mean it. You ready? I shall not die, but live. And declare the works of the Lord. Let's do that again. I shall not die, but live. And declare the works of the Lord. One more time. I shall not die, but live. 
and declare the works of the Lord. And how are we going to declare the works of the Lord? We're going to be sharing what he's done for us. What has he done for us? You know, and, I was, and I'm reminded, I'm reminded that uh, when the Lord first healed me of emphysema, I'm here to tell you, I, I, I was, uh, you know, I look for victims. Where's my next victim that I can, boy, I can tell, I'll get them trapped in an elevator. I'll get, them, I'll get them in the bathroom. Hey, you know, it's tapping on the stall. Hey, you know what the Lord did for me? I had emphysema and he healed me. He just showed up in my room and healed me. Doctors told me I had five years to live. If I did live, I'd be hooked up to an oxygen tank. But here he came, and he healed me. And, you know, it's too late to tell me he's not. He's an alive God. See, let me tell you what that does. That doesn't exalt you. That exalts him because nobody can heal you of emphysema. Not nobody can. They can doctor you, and they can give you inhalers and all that junk. But I'm here to tell you, it takes a God to give you new lungs. He gave me brand new lungs. And you know what? That was in 1996 or 97. I'll have to go look. And did you know from that day to this, I still have them brand new lungs. I still have them great lungs. Isn't that good? I can work just like a man. I can climb a ladder. I, you know what? Thank God for Jesus. Do you think that I can exalt anything on myself? No. There is a living God that he didn't come to me because I deserved it. He didn't come to me because I was great. He come to me because he is love and he's mercy and his kindness oh thank you father thank you thank you thank you for the lamb of God Woo! hallelujah I'm talking about something great today not just good but great boy I'm telling you you know what we got to tell it though see we got to tell it and it's not about just about healing how many times were you in that state of depression it, and, and let me tell you what the devil will say. Just go to the doctor and get some medicine. It'll numb you. Go get numbed. You won't have to deal with nothing. You'll be like a zombie. You can just get up and go to bed. Nothing will affect you. Nothing will bother you. That's what the devil will tell you. But see, here come Jesus. Here come Jesus. He said, I'll renew your mind every morning. That's a promise. And so when depression comes and it wants to sit there day after day, what do you got to do? You've got to, you've got to. Say, I've got to. You've got to make your mind up. I'm not going to live and die in this state of depression. I'm coming out because I'm victorious through the Lamb of God. He promised me he will. Not me, not me going and getting drugged up, but he will renew my mind every morning. And you know what? Believe it. Trust him and believe it. Amen? Amen. So are you going to live and not die? And are we going to start proclaiming and sharing the works of the Lord? Amen. You say, yeah, but they might think something. They, they might think I'm crazy. Well, who cares? Really? You, you're going to hold back on telling something about Jesus because somebody might think something about They're going to think something about you anyway. I got news for you. Not everybody's going to like you. In fact, the majority of those are, are not going to like you. So you know what? Let's start telling it. Are we going to start telling it? You know what? You ought to be, you ought to be getting on your, your family's nerves. You ought to. Well, let me tell you what happened. They'll go, oh, my gosh, Daddy, I heard that 15 times. I know. I know God healed you and brought you out of a wheelchair. I know. But no, keep telling it. Just keep telling it. Be a re you be the reminder. You be. Oh, my gosh, you know, I had that COVID. No, let me tell you, I had COVID, and I called pastors, and they prayed, and, boy, I come right out of it. Look at me. I'm right here. They'll go, I oh, know, Mimo, I know, I know. I've heard this 50 times. Well, say it 51 times. Do you see what I'm saying today? See, what we do is we let the devil shut us up. We do. It's the devil that shuts us up. The more that you tell it and the more that you talk about it, the more of the enemy is defeated in your life. 
Do you understand? Let's stop talking about the bad and let's start talking about the good. How about that? Woo, glory, hallelujah. Okay, turn to Proverbs. <clears throat> Proverbs 14. <clears throat> Proverbs 14. I'm just having too much fun preaching today. I'm just going to tell y'all that. And we're only going to get one verse, and we're all going to read that one verse together. I'll give you time to find it. Proverbs, Proverbs 14, 12. Proverbs 14, 12. We ready? Here we go. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Let's read that again. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Now, we just got through reading a scripture that we stand on that we'll live and not die, and we'll pro proclaim the works of the Lord. But when I said before, there are many ways in this earth, many ways. That's why Jesus said, I'm the only way to get to the Father. Because there were many ways that people tried to get to the Father. And there are many ways still in this earth that some, some of the ways seem right. And let me tell you how it seems right. And the Lord help me to get this out. A lot of times, even in the church world, we bank our spirituality on our possessions on how much or what we possess. You know, like if you run into someone, the first thing that they'll ask you is not, how, how, uh, how's the Lord and you doing? How, ma how many miracles have you had working in your life? They say, how many do you have in your church? Because that's what's important. What kind of monies do you get? Because that's, that's on the scale of importance. They're not looking at what the real importance is. And so what happens is that the more, I call them toys, the more possessions that a person has, the enemy will use that because we're keeping this in mind, that Satan, Jesus called him the God of this world. Remember, we talked about that last Sunday, I believe. That Satan is the God of this world. Say this out loud the God of possessions. Because if you remember, when, when Jesus was led up, remember when he was led up in the wilderness, he said Satan took him up on a high temple and showed him all that he possessed. And if you remember, Jesus didn't call him a liar. He didn't say, you can't offer me this because you don't have it. No, that ain't what he said. Mm. The reason he didn't say it is because Satan was given everything in this world through the fall of Adam and Eve. And that's why you can't blame God about the bad stuff. You need to be clinging to God when the bad stuff comes. See, see. Okay, so since mankind has a tendency to believe, okay, then this way that I'm in is right because look at what all I have. Look here, I'm blessed. And, and, uh, and so the other thing is, I, I can keep living just like I live. I can dabble in sin. I can do all this stuff because look at all the stuff I got. See, God's blessing me. Do you understand? So that is why that we have to, we have to keep focused that, uh, that we place our lives in the Word. See, the Word is our mirror. And if we're doing something that isn't going along with the Word, we need to make sure which God is, is, is giving this to us or doing this for us. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now then, on the flip side of this coin, God is our provider. <laughs> 
He's our provision. He's our provider. But see, when we start, the stuff starts possessing us. Then we, we need to go back to our first love. We need to figure out what's going on wrong. Do you understand? And I don't know who out there needed to hear this, but I know someone needed to hear this because I, I, I didn't know I was going to go in that depth of that direction this morning. But your stuff and your possessions does not dictate that you're in the right way. Because, see, I can take you in here in the Word, and we don't have time this morning, but I can take you in the Word to show you where the disciples, many times, they said, they've all left me. They've all forsaken me. I'm here by myself. I'm all alone. Or they would say, whatever house you go in, eat what they eat. You may tell you why they said that? Because they didn't have they didn't have a grocery, they didn't have a Walmart to run down to. See, their way, their way in, in our in our society, their way would be wrong. But their way was as right as right could be. Because, see, they didn't give up. They didn't let go of their faith and their confidence in God. They didn't move off of what they saw their Savior lay his life down for them. Do you understand today? And so make sure that your stuff doesn't possess you. And you say, well, I don't have a lot of stuff. Can I tell you this today? That a homeless person can let his stuff possess him. He, he would kill a person for trying to get his card of stuff. Do you understand? And so, see, the Lord is teaching us today that, that what we've got to do is, is to, to make sure that we stay in the way, not our own ways. Do you understand? Yes. Is this good? Is this good teaching? Yes. Yes. Okay. There is a way, verse, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Proverbs uh, 14, 12. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof. And see, you can go along and you not know until the end. And so let's don't do that. Let's, let's don't be ignorant today. And you know what? Yes, and I'm going to say this. If you know that you've done this, let me tell you how far away you are from God. One prayer. You need to ask forgiveness. Ask the Lord to change your heart and your mind that you will know. See how I look at that, what we have. I look at everything. I, okay, you know, I, I'm a firm believer in tithing, the first tenth. I am. I'm a firm believer in that. I, I, I believe that if you want the rest of your 90% blessed, then the first 10% is God's. And if you just, you know, you just just do it. You say, well, I can't afford it. Well, you can't afford not to do it. You know, and I believe in that. And I believe in giving. I believe in giving. I believe in, 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 uh, in sharing and all of that. But see how I look at everything that we own, that we possess. I look at it that it's not the 10% I give or the offerings I give, but everything down to the shoes in my closet belongs to God. Amen. See, that's how I look at it. And so since I look at it that way, then no matter where I'm at or what I'm doing, if my father wants me to give away a, a bracelet or a necklace or a pair of shoes or whatever it is, well, okay. You know, why? Because it's not mine anyway. I, you know, he, he, lets me, he lets me take care of it. It's, 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 you understand what I'm saying? That if you'll get that mentality, then you won't never let stuff on you. Thank you. Whew, I finally got that out. Goodness. I, I was struggling there trying to get that out. I want y'all to get that. Okay. Turn to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 7, verse 12 through 14. Here we go. Therefore... All things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. So I'm supposed to treat other people like 
I would like for them to treat me. But it didn't say they would treat me that way. Do you understand? But he's telling us the right way to treat other people is how I want them to treat me. Amen? This is Jesus talking. Okay, verse 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth. Do you understand? There's a way that will lead you down a path that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate and narrow. Say narrow. Narrow Narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. Boy, I'm telling you, this is a powerful word. This isn't something to play around with. Amen. 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 And I'm going to share this with you, a thought that, that I know that the Holy Spirit dropped in me. And, uh, and I'm meditating about it, what we need to do about it. I've been meditating. So here's what we do. How many, oh, first of all, I'm going to ask, how many in the house have family members that you know that they're lost? Okay. Looks like it's 100%. Let me tell you what we do. We, pray, we all pray for them, right? We pray for them. Lord, save them. Lord, bring them out of darkness. And the very moment that they have anything go wrong, anything, do you know what we do? I'm going to tell you what we do. Y'all ready? We get two or three people that we know knows how to pray, and we pray them out of it. And they still stay in the situation they're in. Year after year. But then we're wondering why they're not getting saved. They're not coming to the Lord. They're not, they're not changing. You me tell you why? Because we walk and live in the righteous way of God. And God answers our prayers. And so what we're doing is we're helping them stay in darkness. And I didn't want to share this with y'all because I'm telling you, when I got it dropped in me, it was like it did take your breath away. Because we all have been guilty of this. Can I get an amen in the house? Amen. Because we don't want them to hurt. We don't want them to be poor. We don't want them to do without. We want their lives to be prosperous and we want them to be happy and we want them... But they're on their way to hell, though. Do you understand the importance of this today? They are on their way to hell, and we're helping them to stay in the broad way. Let's all say this out loud. God, forgive me. Let me hear by the Spirit how to pray. Amen? Amen. You may may tell you something. When I was a little girl... I remember this. People would pray. They would pray. And they would say, let the hounds of hell go after them until they come to God. They would. They would pray. God, let their ways be upon them until they turn to you. If that's the only way, because the most... See, back in the day when I was a little girl, the most important thing wasn't that they be prosperous and wealthy and happy and they can go to the lakes and they can go, go fly kites and, and do everything except serve God. But see, the most important thing was that there is a hell and it's real and they're going there if they don't change their ways. And we would fall in at the altars and say, God, let their ways become the ways of God see we've stopped praying the right way we're wanting everybody to be happy and everybody to be but I'm here to tell you today there is a day coming that the end thereof is sudden destruction come on saints we got to get it right we got to begin to pray and when somebody calls you say oh pray for me and you know and you know the, and you know what the first thing we need to start asking them well what, what is your pastor saying Oh, well, I don't go to church. 
Wait a minute. And then you know what? Call them on the carpet. You're telling me you want me to pray for you and you don't go to church? You don't serve God? You don't do nothing but you want me to pray you out of it? Is that what you're telling me? Come on, let's get real here. Let's get some backbone. Let's keep our families out of hell. I said, let's keep our families out of hell. See, this isn't a message I wanted to preach today. I can tell you that because, you know, I'm, I'm, as, I'm, I'm probably the biggest guilty one here because I don't want my babies to, oh, God, touch my babies. Help them stay where they're at. Are they in church? No. Are they serving you? No. No. But I want them happy, though. I want them prosperous and happy and well. But wait a minute. The word says that the end thereof is sudden destruction. Wait a minute. If I, if I just want them to be happy here, but what about the hereafter? What about that? Let's let that be important. Amen? Amen. I think we're getting this. Are we getting this? I want them on the narrow way where there's just enough room for them and Jesus. Yeah. Turn to John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. John chapter 14. You know what? I can tell you this. Some of our family members... If we said to them, oh, I'm just, uh, I just want to let you know that I love you with all my heart, but I'm not going to be praying for you ever again. You know what? I bet it nearly take their breath away because they know they can depend on us. They know that one phone call, they'll be all right. But you know what? You know, I mean, I'm laughing about it. But I know there are some of mine that would be going, what? You're not going to pray anymore. <laughs> we're going to be praying for them, but we're going to be praying right. Amen? Amen. All right. John 14, verse 5 and 6 says, Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man, say no man. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There's only one way, the way, the truth, and his name is Jesus. Amen. 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 And you know what else? Thank you. The next time that you've got somebody wanting prayer, and I'm saying family, that's just because we love our families and we, you know, we want the best for them. But, but anyone, you know what we need to do? We need to first say, well, how's your walk with the Lord? Where are you at with the Lord? Oh, well, I believe him. No, I don't need to know that. I need to know. Is there a relationship there? How's your relationship with the Lord? Well, first, we're going to pray and get your heart right. Because, see, the Word says, that which is it easier to say? It's what Jesus said. Thy sins be forgiven or take up thy bed and walk. Well, how about getting their sins forgiven? How about that? That'll work. Say that out loud. That'll work. Okay, here we go. Here we go. All right, last scripture is Psalms 37. <clears throat> go back to Psalms 37. 37. <clears throat> and 23. Now it says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way. Sometimes there are things that we walk through in this life that it feels like a train wreck. It does. It feels like it. But I'm here to tell you that I'm so thankful that our Father loves us so much that he won't let us continue to go down a way that is a way of destruction. That whatever has to happen to get us out of that way, I am very thankful 
that he is that. Yeah. Jeffrey, I have some little uh, handouts here. I want you to give everybody one. And um, everybody stay on your feet. <clears throat> oh, okay. Uh, when uh, Sister Jenny Baker uh, was uh, ministered here, her daughter read to us the ABCs. And the, what that is, that's who you are and what you are. And so that's what these little, uh, these little handouts are. And uh, see, if you missed service this morning, look what you missed. Okay, so uh, here's what uh, we're going to do. Now, we just read that the steps of a, of, a, of a good man, they're ordered by God. So, God has ordered our steps. But that is by choice whether we walk in that path. That's by our choice. Because, see, we can go the way of the world. Amen? Amen. Okay, so these ABCs, we're going to start this out. Everybody in the house say, I am. I am. I am. Okay, so here we go. I want you to read with me. You ready? I am accepted by God. I am beloved by God. I am chosen by God. I am dedicated to God. I am enlightened by God. I am forgiven by God. I am the grace of God. I am the hope for the future. I inheritance in heaven. I have justification in God. I have the knowledge of God. I have the love of God. I have the mercy of God. I have the nearness to God. I have the oneness with God. I am the peace of God. I have the quickening of the Spirit. I, have the redeem I am the redeemed by God. I am sealed with the Holy Ghost. I am treasured by God. I am united with other believers. I'm validated as an authentic child of God. I have his wisdom. One day, I will be exalted to live with him in heavenly places. I yearn to be with God. I, God brings zest to my life. And these, I want you to take home with you. And listen, when your enemy comes to try to persuade you different, get your ABCs out. You let him know who you are and whose you are, and what you are. Yes. Amen? Yes. Did we get this today? Yes. Did we learn something? Yes. Is there many ways, but there's only one real way, yes. and his name is Jesus? Do we choose to stay in Jesus today? Yes. yes, amen. Hallelujah. All right, has there been any prayer requests come in over the... the Live stream, Shelly. Okay. Jackie, if you'll get a mic and uh, come and pray. We've got a prayer request that came in this morning, and it's uh, Sarah's uh, son, Sarah Thornberry's son. And, uh, you know, I just believe God can make a way where there is no way. He can make a way where there is no way. Amen. Let me see Hebrews. I want us to stand on Hebrews 13, and I think it's verse... Uh, <clears throat> Three. Hebrews 13, 3 says, Remember them that are in bonds as bound with them, and them which suffer adversity as being yourselves also in the body. Uh, Dion, Sarah's son, in prison, he is looking at parole coming up, a second time. A second time, but there's been a lot of opposition, and Sarah needs Dion at home. Yes. And uh, I want us to set ourselves, based on this scripture right here, 
if I was bound, I would want somebody to be praying for me Amen. that there be a supernatural move of God to help yes. me get free so that I can do what I need to do. Yes. And we also want to pray for Dion that he gets enlightenment, that he'll walk with God yes. on this narrow yes. way that Barbara's been talking about. Yes. That he'll that he'll get it right with God. Amen. Yes. And he'll walk.